this is a constantly evolving situation that we're trying to navigate and ensure that we're doing what's best for all of our kids. Um, and it's tricky. It's definitely tricky to try to, to navigate this. So our practices that we put in place through the advice of legal counsel and looking at Title IX and looking at OCR and looking at the executive order are to meet with the parents. If a student requests to use a restroom that is not the restroom that is assigned to their gender at birth, then we meet with the parents. The parents have to be a part of this decision-making process. And we make a plan for that student. Generally, that is, would you like to use the nurse's restroom? We, would, we think it would be best for everyone if you would use the nurse's restroom. And nine times out of 10, that's what happens. The students are going to use a facility that's a single-use facility. Um, and then we work through it from there. Students are not able to just go back and forth in between different restrooms. Our general rule that we enforce is that boys use the boys' restroom, girls use the girls' restroom. It is only in circumstances where a student, for one reason or another, feels uncomfortable using that restroom assigned to them that we go through this process to make an accommodation. There's not a single or specified response for addressing the matters because we look at this by the need for each student and all of the circumstances may vary and so we take the circumstances into consideration. Just for a little context, in talking to secondary campus principals, that's grades six through 12, in the past calendar year, there have been fewer than 50 cases where students have requested to use a different bathroom. So that's out of 40,000 secondary students, there have been fewer than 50 cases. In most cases, again, they choose to use the other restroom. It's our understanding that if they did not agree with this accommodation, they would be denying access and that that would violate Title IX. That's our understanding of Title IX and of the law, which is why we do it this way. Also, it's important to know that our discipline data from last year does not contain a single incident in which a transgender student harmed another student in a restroom. To our knowledge, would take place potentially on harassment allegations and disciplinary consequences would be assigned according to the student code of conduct. We know that there are times when a student might feel uncomfortable with this situation. Any student who feels uncomfortable in our district for any reason should go to a trusted adult, a parent, an assistant principal, a counselor, so that we can talk through what that student needs to feel safe and supported on campus. So this is about every single student.